Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over a few things and we're going to start with this antique uh, kerosene heater. These are not safe to use anymore. They don't burn clean uh, if this one even works. There's a lot of rust. Uh, but I'm just going to clean it up really well and then give it a few coats of this Rust-Oleum matte finish. And it really doesn't matter. You can use a uh, any kind of finish that you want because we're going to be painting over this. I just want to get that rust sealed in really well uh, before I go to paint it. So I'm, the body of this, I'm going to paint with two coats of the color buttercream. And then I mixed up a pink uh, to go on the rest of it. And uh, I, I just kind of kept adding colors. Don't even know what I added here, but I just wanted to mute the pink. And the pink that I had mixed um, a few weeks ago, I finally ran out. So I just kind of started mixing some colors. So I'm not gonna be able to help you with the color that I'm using, just a muted pink. So again, I gave this two coats of the color buttercream, and then I, I will give um, the bottom and that center piece and the top piece uh, two coats of the pink that I mixed. Now I didn't bother taping anything off because it because it was pretty easy to uh, get a clean edge there uh, with these areas. Now I didn't sand all the rust off. I just Again, I just cleaned it really well and then uh, let it dry well and then did the sealer coat on it to make sure that that rust doesn't come through this paint. Now, I don't like the color of the knob uh, there at the bottom, and so I'm just going to use some bronze uh, gilding wax and just kind of rub that on with my finger just to make that uh, have a better look. Now at this point, I could have added a uh, stencil to this, but I'm gonna do some decoupaging on it instead. Again, it's not gonna be used, so it doesn't matter uh, what kind of finish I put on this. Uh, now, my plan was just for decor with this, and my husband mentioned that it would make a really good plant stand, and as it turns out, it really would because you have a good flat top to it. <laughs> So now I'm just going to take some of my script stamps and just kind of randomly stamp in different places on this. I just want to add a little bit of layering behind some of my decoupage. So I'm going to do some random stamping and some random, random decoupage. And uh, I'm using a lighter ink here because I don't want this to be really sharp. Uh, I just use the timber brown so that it, it just wouldn't be so obvious. And then I'm going to decoupage some rice paper on this, and uh, I will attach that rice paper in the description uh, if you want to purchase those. But I'm also taking some, uh, just some little pieces of um, napkins and decoupaging some of that on. And this is just a napkin that had some script in the background that has the colors that will work so i'm just tearing pieces of that out and doing some random uh, decoupage on this so then you'll have the the one layer of the script that's just stamped on and then you'll have another layer of script that's on the on the tissue and then this is the rice paper that i'm using and again, I will attach the, in the, that in the description. There are two pages of these, four images on each page, and then the second page is the same as the first. So I'm just kind of placing right now before I attach this because some of this I want to kind of layer underneath it. I used to paint these in some coordinating colors and just sell them as decor and they sold really well, but this is the first time that I've ever stamped or decoupaged on one. So this one, I want to have a really shabby chic look to it. And as you can see, I'm just kind of deciding as I go and just randomly placing these. I want to soften the edges of this 
And uh, I'm also going to uh, sand over this um, rice paper and use some antiquing ink on it before I seal it just so that uh, I soften those flowers because the flowers that I'm going to be using from the napkin are more the color that is on the trim of this um, of this heater and uh, so the flowers that are in this rice paper are not exactly what I want them so again I'm just going to kind of sand over those and then use my antiquing edge to tone them down and that ends up working well I don't think I got that on video though I just love items like this that you can that you can turn into decor uh, even though they're not usable anymore. I think that the style of, of those heaters was really neat, and it's a shame that, uh, that they're not real practical anymore because uh, they were much prettier than the ones we have today. I remember, though, my parents using these growing up, and um, even then, you could smell that kerosene really, really strong, so... I don't think it was real safe for us then, but um, definitely they've improved on, on the function of them. So I'm using another one of those rice papers on the back, but I'm also doing some of that random layering. And then when I finish with the decoupage and I get the look that I want, then I'm just going to take some sandpaper and just kind of do some light distressing on it. I want to bring some of that darker underneath back. Uh, I don't know that I get that on video, but um, but I do a little bit and, and just light distressing. And I didn't mention that I tear these images out of this rice paper because I don't want that sharp edge. Um, if you haven't ever used rice paper, it uh, has a real fibrous look to it. And so when you tear it, you get those little fibers and it, uh, it just gives it a lot more natural look. And I'm applying this with Mod Podge uh, in case you're wondering. And, um, and then I'm going to seal this once I'm finished with that same Rust-Oleum Clear uh, spray. And now I'm tearing some roses from um, uh, some napkins that I just ordered from Amazon. So I will include those in the, in the description. But I really like the soft look of those. I'm sorry, that was Kaylee being silly. She works at the shop with me now. So um, it's nice to get random hugs and even some of that silliness. I got another hang tag in the mail today. And uh, it is from uh, the lady who does Farmhouse Frugally, which is another uh, YouTube crafting channel uh, that I follow. And she does such a great job. And if you guys are looking for someone else to follow, check her out. Uh, because I think you'll really be happy with her work. So I mentioned that once this is finished, um, i just take some fine grit sandpaper and do some light distressing on it and then I seal this with that rust-oleum clear finish uh, but also after I've done that I, d I add some um, Van Dyke brown glaze to just that pink area because I wanted to uh, tone it down and warm it up a lot uh, I did my clear coat first because I didn't want to make it brown. I didn't want to uh, to hide this pink and just make it too dirty brown. So that's why I did my clear coat first and then I did my uh, brown glaze just on the pink. And then once I'm finished with this, uh, then I'm going to be making a hang tag to go with it. So I'm trying to do that on more of my projects as I go just to give you guys some more ideas on how to do the hang tags in case you want to make them to send in. Uh, so I just thought I may as well add them as I go instead of um, making a lot ahead. I do have a lot made up ahead, 
but just for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and, and make some of them uh, to go with the items. So it, in each video, at least one of the items, I'll make a tag uh, to go with it. So I'm starting with some little pieces of thin cardboard that I just cut up into different sizes and then I used my scissors to rough, rough up the edges uh, and I lightly painted these with just an off-white, any color of white you want to use, but I like to use a really light color so that it goes with anything that I want to decoupage on. So I roughed up those edges and then I'm going to use my antiquing wax and uh, antique just around the edges. Now you can use all sorts of bases. Uh, I've even used uh, cardstock or um, even cloth, uh, but just kind of use what you like or what works with your item. But I think one of my favorite um, bases is this thin cardboard because you can really rough those edges up and I just really like the look of that. I think it works for shabby chic tags, it works for rustic tags and even just regular farmhouse country. Now that was an image that I got off the graphics very uh, quite some time ago and just had a bunch of them cut out. I just printed them on some of the free graphics on regular copy paper and then I cut them out and then then you can antique around those edges and uh, use those on your hang tags and I'm just using regular Elmer's school glue here to do my decoupage with and here I've just taken some different napkins that I had and uh, and tore some images off of them and I'm just using some of that to decoupage with and I think these roses here are going to look really good with, uh, with this little heater. I think it's going to go well together. And of course, I love to do script stamping. So um, I'm always talking about if, if you're just starting out crafting and you're trying to decide some things that you'll use a lot, um, script, some sort of script stamp is uh, very necessary i feel like because i use it all the time now i really want this tag to have a really shabby chic look because i feel like that little heater is going to be very shabby chic and i think using these little napkins especially when you can just tear out very small areas of the napkin I think it's a very economical way to do these and I really like the layered look that it gives because you almost can you almost have a sheer look to it and I just think that that looks really good on these and this is more of a thicker cardboard and you would think that that hole punch wouldn't have worked but it it worked fine now I've had several people ask do I use these for pricing I use them for both uh, decorative purposes and for pricing. But what I do so that the price doesn't waste the tag, if that makes sense, I just put the price on uh, one of these little square price stickers and then I just put that on the back um, and it then it'll peel right off and won't ruin your tag. Um, and that just works for pricing for me. And then if you give it as a gift, you can just peel that right off and it still has the tag. And I think that that hang tag added a lot to this. Then I thrifted this little decanter and um, it just needed a really good cleaning. So I just cleaned it really well with alcohol and um, and I'm not going to paint it. Um, I'm just going to paint the lid and uh, add some uh, some of these transfer transfers. And this is from the set uh, from Dixie Bell called Vintage Post. And um, so I'm just transferring this on the front. And then I'm going to use uh, some rose transfers that I've had for quite a while. I've gotten so many uses out of them. 
Uh, the problem is they are a little stiffer than most and they have that shiny finish. Uh, but I found that um, you can either sand that off, which is what I'm going to be doing here, or you can spray it with a matte clear coat and that will take the shine off. I don't want to spray this one with that matte clear coat because I don't want to uh, change the look of this bottle. So I just chose to sand that off here and, and then I'm going to be adding some lace around the top. So I just cut some strips of a fine lace and, um, and then I'm going to kind of rough up those ends. I just take my scissors and once I cut it the length that I want it, I take my scissors and just kind of pull at it so that it doesn't have a neat finish. I want that wispiness on the ends. And then I'm just going to take some different lace and put around it and I even uh, take part of an old doily and kind of wrap that around the top. Uh, you don't want perfect at all. You just play with it until you like the look that you get. Um, this one just happened to work out because I was able to stretch it over the top. But uh, I don't want this to be exact on both sides. I want it to be very random. And you just kind of play with it until you like the look that you get. And you can tie it or hot glue it or both. Uh, you could add buttons here if you wanted. You could add some jewelry around the top. Uh, I'm going to be taking this paper or this napkin and decoupaging uh, a couple of just regular keys. They're not old, just regular keys that I've painted white. And then I'm doing some decoupaging over them. So then I'll tie a couple of those around this instead of adding jewelry. So I think on these old bottles, when you're going for that shabby chic look, uh, the main thing is just to use vintage laces where you can, or at least laces that look vintage. And it's almost like the scrappier, the better. Uh, more often than not, I paint bottles when I do them like this, but I just really like the look of this one just being clear. And, uh, and then if you want to, uh, if you ever want this to be back to the original, maybe you want to change the style of it, uh, the transfer can easily be scraped off and then all this removed. So you haven't ruined your bottle at all on this one. And here I just put, instead of trying to piece that on these, I just, on these keys, I just put my decoupage on the keys and laid them on the napkin. And then you can just kind of pull all that off once it's dry and sand around the edges. And that's just a good way to be able to use keys but not have to have them be old. And then again, I'm going to take that top and paint it. Now, this is painted, but we know that chalk paint can be removed. So, uh, instead of trying to clear coat that, uh, all that I did was use my antiquing ink over the top of it to kind of tone it down and then it's not sealed so if you want to remove that color from the lid you can now sometimes you find an item that you just love uh, but uh, it doesn't sell and you don't really want to change it up this is one of those items it's just silver plate it isn't real but it is very old so I don't want to make any changes that are gonna um, that are gonna really change it. And so what I decide to do on this is add some more of those rose transfers because they're a stiffer transfer, so they can be easily removed. Uh, so I'm just gonna transfer those to the front and sand off some of that shine and then uh, make a hang tag for this. So that will be uh, something that I can add, but again, it won't be anything that has to be permanent. And I started to just add this shabby chic hang tag and decided that that wasn't enough. Uh, so I did, I put some of those roses on the front of this one. So I thrifted this pot here that has that floral foam that I couldn't get out of the bottom. 
and this the top two a cheese cloche. So I decided to put these two together and make a cloche. So I'm going to start out by painting this pot and uh, painting it in that same color pink and it just took one coat to cover it. So I painted that, covered that well, and then I decided that I'm going to paint the knob on the uh, cheese cloche, uh, but I wanted to give it a little bit more decor, or wanted to give it more detail, rather. And so before I painted that, I made a little trinket mold here and I glued it to the top of it. And I tried to pick one of those little trinket molds that had uh, had the same style of design as the detail in the pot, if that makes sense. And I just glued that to the top. Now, obviously, it's not going to cover the whole thing. It's just going to be the top of it. And then once that starts to dry, then I can paint that in that same color of pink and it'll look like it all goes together. So that's a good way to bring this uh, this cheese top together with the pot, and then it makes it look like it all goes together. And I was amazed at how easily this started to come together. It just, uh, I started out wondering if it would work, and it turns out it worked better than I thought it would. Uh, and then after you get it painted again it just it just seems seamless at that point it just looks like it was always together now i wanted to give this more of an antique pink look and i wanted to warm this color up like i did on the little heater so once this is all dry then i added the the van dyke brown glaze to both the pot and this lid and i think that after i did that it really started to come together it gave it a really vintage look um, and it brought out more of the detail in both the pot and the detail on the top of the little handle now i forgot to mention that before i added this brown glaze uh, I took this outside and sprayed it with that clear finish uh, because I didn't want to change this pink up much. I just barely wanted to change it. So um, I mostly wanted some of this to kind of hang out down in the detail. So uh, anytime that you're going to use a glaze or a um, wax, a brown wax, or any kind of darker wax, but you're afraid that it'll take too dark, then always clear coat it first. You could even use a brush on clear coat or you could use um, a clear wax, but you just wanna make sure that you coat it with something first so that that porous paint doesn't soak in too much of the brown. And again, uh, it's amazing to me what a difference this glaze makes on this pink. And as you can see, it's a mess inside, but I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna be covering that up. So I'm just putting some floral foam down inside it, and, uh, and then I will be adding some decor to that. This floral foam, uh, I'm it'll give me a base to stick some twigs and things like that down in uh, but it also i need it to boost my decor up almost to the top of this pot because uh, if i were to put it down inside the pot it wouldn't show up well i'm using spanish moss here but i'm just using the greener spanish moss because i want it to look more springy i feel like a lot of times the browner mosses look more for fall and uh, these greener uh, go better for spring and summer also i'm using green in my vignette so i just went outside and collected some little twigs that i can stick here and there and that will just give me a little bit of height and interest 
uh, because this is gonna be somewhat of a nest. And, uh, but I like the little twigs sticking up here and there. I think it looks more natural and also uh, adds height. And then I'm just gonna decoupage some napkins on a couple of just regular plastic eggs that I've painted and uh, use that for the decor inside. I like to use nest a lot, and I know that maybe some of you think that I use them too much, but I think for spring and summer, uh, they're not limited to Easter whatsoever, and I think for spring and summer, they make really good decor. So uh, in order to add more interest to them and, and not just make them, uh, them not be so boring, um, putting some decoupage on them really helps, I think. And I think another thing that adds uh, some springiness or even summer to your, uh, to your nest is to add some greenery. So I'm just taking some greenery that's just very um, muted green and just sticking that here and there and gluing it in place. And uh, then I think that that's all this is gonna need. And I think this would even be pretty without the lid. And I love the look of these colors together. I love this soft green and this muted pink together. Uh, so adding this greenery, I think really helped this. So now I'm gonna add a hang tag. And um, I looked up on thrifting a book about birds and it was like kind of like a bird encyclopedia, uh, but it had all sorts of uh, bird pictures in it. So my daughter went through it and tore all those out and antiqued around the edges. And now I have those for uh, my summer hang tags or my spring hang tags. So this is just a little piece of scrap paper that I have um, that I tore out and antiqued around the edges there just to add a little bit of color to my tag. And then I did some uh, script stamping on it and so I'm keeping this one pretty simple. It's a smaller tag, so you can keep it more simple. Uh, I just did some script stamping on the back of it and added a little bit of lace here and there for texture and, uh, and a button, and, uh, and it didn't take long at all to make this one. And I just took a little scrap of fabric here and just kind of wadded it up on the bottom. I don't like to lay it flat because I like the texture that just kind of squishing it up with the glue does. And um, and I didn't have to add much at all to this one to, to make it um, really shabby chic looking. And obviously I'm gonna uh, t tie this on with some lace, uh, but what I decided to do was tie some lace around the top first uh, just to add some extra texture to it. And then I tied it on with a thinner piece of lace. I know I just posted yesterday, but this was the video that I was having trouble getting to upload. And then I finally just gave up on it and posted the last one uh, or tried to and realized there was another issue. So I fixed that issue and decided to go ahead and post this one today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.